Apple just released a slew of new beta updates. Let's walk you through the best new features, including new emoji, universal control, and how you can wear a mask and use Face ID. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and I've been busy this afternoon updating all of my gear with Apple's latest software updates. Specifically in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through changes coming to iPadOS 15.4, macOS Monterey 12.3, and iOS 15.4. There is a lot of stuff to talk about in this update, so let's go ahead and just dive into everything. Starting with universal control. Universal control was promised last fall, and it never arrived. Apple said the feature would be launching in beta later on, and it seems 15.4 for iPad and macOS Monterey 12.3 is when it will be delivered, at least as long as nothing goes wrong before these updates hit the market. Now, what we're gonna see with universal control is the ability to share a keyboard and cursor from a Mac to an iPad or a second Mac. Let's take a look at how it works. I have my MacBook Pro here, which was updated to macOS Monterey 12.3 and my iPad Pro, which was also just updated to iPadOS 15.4. On my MacBook Pro here, there's no setup. There's nothing you have to do right now. All you need to do is take the cursor, which is located right now in the middle of the screen, and I'm going to just move it to the side. And just like that, it moves over to my iPad. And now I have my Mac's cursor on my iPad. I can use the keyboard and the mouse from my Mac right here on my iPad. It's kind of crazy how smooth and easy this works. Over here on my iPad, I'm using my Mac's trackpad. I can use all my multi-touch gestures. I can jump between applications. I can do everything that I could if I was just connecting a mouse or a trackpad to my iPad. And if I use the keyboard, this works as well. I can search for Apple Insider. Um, anything works, basically just using the keyboard and mouse trackpad from your Mac over on your iPad. And when you're ready to go back to your Mac, you just drag that cursor back to that left side of the screen and it pops right back over and moves over to my Mac. Another new feature coming to iOS is the ability to unlock your phone with Face ID while wearing a mask. Now, during the setup of iOS 15.4, a new screen will appear walking through the setup process where you can choose whether or not to go with a more secure version of Face ID that will use your entire face or opt for the ability to unlock while wearing a mask. Now, it is less secure to do while wearing the mask because Face ID is only looking at the area around your eyes. So you do need to not wear sunglasses and it'll be less secure because there's less area that Apple is scanning to unlock your phone. If you have an Apple Watch, this may not matter because you can already unlock your phone while wearing a mask if you have an Apple Watch. But if you don't have an Apple Watch and you wear a mask often, it may make sense to be able to unlock your phone quickly and easily with that mask on. Apple's also made some changes with Face ID to make it easier to unlock your phone while wearing glasses. Across all these updates, Apple's introducing 37 new emoji. And with those 37 emoji, if you count skin tones and other variations, there are a total of 112 new variable emojis coming in this update. What are the new emojis? Well, there's a bunch of them, but just a few of them that I want to point out. There's a melting face, a gasping face, a peeking face. You can also see there's a troll, biting lip, welling up eyes, a salute, slide, a jar, beans, a life preserver, some nests with and without eggs, an x-ray, a crutch, it looks like there's a disco ball, an all-seeing eye in the middle of a hand, a dead battery, some bubbles, a tire, coral, an ID, and more. Here's what Emojipedia put out showing off the new emoji. Now these aren't Apple's artwork. You can see those in the ones that I already showed you, but it gives you an idea of the new emoji that are coming with this update. On iPad, there is a new keyboard brightness option that can be added to Control Center to adjust the backlight of an attached keyboard. Both iPhone and iPad have a new Apple Card widget that can keep track of your weekly spending. And Apple says the new updates include support for DualSense controllers adaptive trigger firmwares that can adjust the tension and the pressure on the triggers on the PlayStation 5 DualSense controllers. 
One last feature coming with these updates, if you rely on iCloud to store your passwords inside a keychain, there's a handy new addition. You're now able to add notes to any password that you've created in Safari. It makes it really easy if you want to add something quick to those without having to resort to a full-fledged third-party password manager. So what do you guys think? We're still digging through these and I might find more features and if I do, I'll post them on Twitter or in the article on Apple Insider. Let me know what you guys think and stay tuned. We got a lot more content coming, including a full deep dive on universal control.